Welcome, my friends, to Divinely Uninspired. This is going to be our Halloween episode because we haven't been together in a while and things just kept getting pushed back because we were out of town and things. So we were going to have a whole episode dedicated just to Halloween, but now we're going to have to squeeze this one in. So, And I wish you could see all of our costumes. That's right. <laughs> I'm dressed up as, uh, as a chicken. Yeah. Paul, what are you dressed up as? Sexy werewolf. Sexy werewolf. Yeah. Okay. What what determines it to be a sexy werewolf? The wear of the costume. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. Very the confidence I have yeah. when I put this on. Very, very clever. What about you, Jeremy? What are you dressed as? Mary Poppins. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Parasol and all. Yeah. And, and what about you, Penny? Well, according to Paul and to Jill earlier, we are wearing the color of wine. So I guess I'm a class of wine. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, I think Paul's costume might have been the best. Just Yeah. I mean... Honestly, you could take any costume and call it sexy whatever, and it makes it more fun. Sexy chicken. Let's Sex, just stop Sexy there. Mary Poppins. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's just, just Mary awkward. Poppins in general. Oh, okay. ooh. So, I will say one of my favorite episodes was of Superstore. Did you ever watch? That was like one of the most underrated shows. It was really good. It was good, but where they <laughs> they made the security lady pick a costume and she'd pick like a police costume but she just grabbed one off the shelf and it ended up being like a really like provocative costume <laughs> but like fun. she was like not a character you would want or expect to see in something like that it was just kind of funny because it was like yeah they do kind of make those costumes kind of look like and then I watched The Office and uh, not Meredith what's the real uh, Angela <laughs> When she did the costume contest, she dressed up as a nurse and she was like, I know what sells in this office, but it was really funny. <laughs> that is funny. I like the episode of The Office where three guys come in dressed as the Joker at the same time. It was when The Dark yeah, Knight came out. It was out. Creed and then it was Kevin and then uh, Dwight. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic because that was the most popular costume by far. Everybody no, thought they were going to be the Joker. One of my favorite Creed moments from the Halloween, because I watch on Peacock, you can watch just the Halloween episodes of that and Parks and Rec. You can just watch mm -hmm. them. And, but, uh, is where Creed comes in and he's got blood all over his shirt. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, oh, great costume, Creed. He was like, he was like, goes with it. He's like, I forgot it was Halloween. Great timing or something <laughs> like that. I loved Creed. So is your is your theory that Creed was actually the Scranton Strangler? Do I you, do think so. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. It lines up. I mean, yeah. the internet's never wrong. Yeah. No, I agree. Okay. Uh, I, I thought it could have been Toby just because he was so into it. But well, he was on the jury though, right? Yeah, but... Mm -hmm plot twist yeah the the guy on the jury is actually the scranton strangler yeah. so anybody have any halloween uh, uh traditions or favorite halloween movies or favorite halloween songs or anything i don't know halloween songs yeah you know, the monster mash yeah, this is halloween yeah My this Bear is Christmas. Ha yeah that's one of our well, favorites we might be doing a halloween song this sunday uh-oh i won't say which one yet thriller, thriller. Oh, i don't be probably mm, can we still yeah, sing no. him yeah okay okay Got to separate the art from the artist. As he does. Anything, the but, anything before anymore. the 90s you can do. Anything past the 90s, really, you just feel it's dirty about him. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. So uh, my favorite Halloween uh, tradition is going trick-or-treating. Oh, yeah, original. No, it's, it's very... Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very... So your uh, favorite part is the whole, what the whole Halloween holiday is based around. Yeah, except when I go trick-or-treating, I, uh, I just throw the candy that they hand me right back at them unless it's Swedish fish. So they hand me Skittles and I just take it and then I chuck it into their faces because I love Swedish fish. And apparently that's Kentucky's favorite Halloween candy too. I don't ever believe those things though. Because like there was one that like Tennessee's was like circus peanuts. And I'm like, I mean, Ew. Tennessee's backwards, but come on. Have you met people from Tennessee? But surely they like something better than circus peanuts. Mm, I don't know. Swedish fish are... Don't, don't you... Don't you... I know oh, my kid loves them. Oh my gosh. I like them. I would not say they're my favorite. I mean, they are. What do I, they listen, taste like? Swedish fish, um, like a sweeter, uh, like a sweeter gummier Twizzler. Mm. That's a pretty good description. Describe. Yeah, they're yeah. sweeter. They are definitely sweeter than what? Twizzlers, and a little bit. They're a little more like a gummy bear version of a Twizzler, maybe. Okay, what about a circus peanut? Oh, they're the worst. Like styrofoam. Styrofoam. What does it taste like? Like oh. styrofoam. <laughs> That's it, the like texture. Slight, yeah, styrofoam. It's all styrofoam. Actually, <laughs> being someone that their favorite toy of all time is a kickball, she might actually really like a circus peanut. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> hush, hush down there. That's she good, would, she would feel like, <laughs> good golly, mother, look, we're at the circus. Let's eat some circus peanuts today, hey? Oh, why did I agree to be on this today? Well, because you have to. Yeah. Hey, we, uh, we have a lot of fun plan for you. This is not a serious episode at all. Um, and sometimes those end up being the best ones. Um, but first things first, we have a song. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
You're listening to Divinely Uninspired, a podcast by Journey Church Shepherdsville, hosted by Jeremy Willis and me, Rusty Wilson. You can find us online at journeyshepherdsville.com. For questions or comments, email podcast at journeyshepherdsville.com. Maybe we'll feature your question or comment on a future episode. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Do you think they actually sold circus peanuts at the circus back in olden times? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think the kids saw the peanuts going to the elephants, right? And then they said, I want one of those. But kids don't like actual peanuts, so they made sweet versions of that. But they didn't have to be that sweet because it was actually peanuts. really logical. They were made by the carny folk. And, uh, yeah, carny folk, you know. Yeah. It's almost like if you left cotton candy out for like six months and let it get real bad, and then you just put like a peanut mold on top of it, that's what you'd end up with. We should do a a, a, a bad candy tasting episode where we make Penny taste all of these candies yeah, that she's never you had know before. what. Okay. You know it'll be right. number one on the list. Good and plenty's. That's right. <laughs> that's that's uh that's April's, April's favorite. favorite. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> She's still working through that pallet of good and plenty's I bought her. This last is a true year. story. So last year for Christmas, I went to go buy her some good and plenty's and they come in like a, a box of tent and there's like, you know, ten there's like the movie movie theater mm-hmm. size boxes or whatever. And so <laughs> there was a box of ten of them. And I went to the guy and he was like, I was like, you know, I get these. He's like, yeah, just take all of them. Like he really, he sold me 10 boxes for what, what one cost because nobody buys good and plenty. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about things tasting good in your mouth, <laughs> we have a great story to start off with. And it's from Jeremy's favorite website, IFL Science. Hey, I'm just going to give you the headline. I'm just going to hit you with it. Uh, though I do love the, the subtitled line right underneath the title. Here's the title. Woman hospitalized for three days after a dog pooped in her mouth. And the, the, the subheading is, and I quote, I suddenly felt something squirt in my mouth. (laughs) So this poor lady was taking a nap. Oh, I just saw the picture. I didn't see the picture the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a picture. Yes. Yeah, there is. Not this, like the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah. So this poor lady (laughs) was taking uh, a nap with her uh, with her chihuahua puppy and i don't know if the chihuahua is infirm or if it uh, it it's sickly on a regular basis but uh, it was suffering from some sort of gastrointestinal distress and just happened to uh, poop in her owner's mouth while she was sleeping um, which is the name of a movie you know while i was sleeping while you were sleeping Your chihuahua pooped in my mouth. Sandra Bullock was good in that. She was. Oscar award winner. Uh, So there is a picture included. And this woman, I'm a little concerned that she took the time to take the picture. Yeah, and and just, what like, yeah. Well, in the article, it says her son was in the shower, so she couldn't wash her mouth. So she had a quick picture. She didn't have a sink or a toilet. I mean, anything at that point would just be. I can't even discuss this. (laughs) It's gross. It's nasty. It is. It is just unreal. Like yeah. when you think about it, the photo needs to be seen. Then, like that's we can link that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we can do that. So this poor lady ends up being in the hospital for three days, uh, just violently ill. <laughs> Why did she swallow? Well, like, I don't understand. Like how this like I, went down. I I think it was one of those things like. You know, like in movies when somebody's asleep and you throw cold water on them and they, you know, wake up gasping and, you know, all that. I think she got hit with the the liquid defecation and it sort of startled her awake and she swallowed in the process. <laughs> and um, this is terrible. What made you decide on this one? This story? Yes. Oh, it's fantastic. It's unreal. It's fantastic. I like the picture showing uh, the the like the one that's not actually the picture of this poor lady, but the one that covers. Uh, it's just like the headline picture. Oh yeah. It it's just a woman who's clearly chink- drinking chocolate syrup, you know, from the heavens. It was uh, it was it was a it was a good choice. There's a lot wrong with this article. There is. Um, what's the worst? What's what's the worst thing a dog has ever done to you? Anybody have anything like really bad? I've got a story. Yeah, one time when Peanut was a baby, um, he w- we were trying to crate train him. But, of course, me being the dog lover, I'm like, no, he's going to go in the bed with me. And Terry's like, I'm out. So he went into the guest bedroom. And Peanut, in the middle of the night, when he was little, must have gotten sick. And I hadn't realized, like, you know how dogs make that noise right before they throw up. And I sleep very heavy. And when I woke up, I had... You mean the one that's like... Yep, yep. 
Mm -hmm. Well, he must have done that about 10 times because mm. it was in my bed, 2 a.m., in my hair, on my feet, on my bed, everything. So, but no, I went and jumped in the shower. So, yeah, I've, take a I've had this first. moment, just not, <laughs> not in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. We, it, it wasn't to me. We had a, well, I, I've talked about Sophie before, I think on here. She was our dog that we had that was just terrible. And we had the greatest dog ever too at the same time named Elvis. And Elvis one time had diarrhea, you know, dogs get this and it's just, you know, it's weird that we have animals at our house. I mean, we do, but, and uh, so he used the bathroom on the floor. Well, Sophie, we weren't home, I guess, decided to waller in it. And so she wallered in it and then just went all over the house. So when we came home, like it was on the couch, on the bed, carpet, like, and you could see like where the original source was because it was just like rubbed into the, you know, like it was in the carpet. Of course, she had it on her fur and all this stuff. And we were just like, like what? Why? Like just why? Was Elvis a bulldog? Because it just no. sounds like a bulldog. No, name. Elvis was a, he was a mutt. He was like a border collie mix, but he was a good dog. He was the best. He was, he really was like genuinely, like we would have kids come over our house and they would like put him in headlocks and like, I mean, he would never snap bar. He would just like look at you like. Okay, I guess this is what's happening right now. So, like, he was a good dog. What about you, Paul? Yeah. yeah. Our sweet Grover, may he also rest in peace. He uh, was a good dog, too. He would. He was a beagle, and he liked to clean up after himself with his own mouth. Mm. <laughs> he would like to, you know, he made a mess, and he would, you know, dispose of it. And it's it was like a self-contained ecosystem. It would just go in and out and around <laughs> and around. Yeah. But my wife didn't care for that, because then he also liked to kiss you on the face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we put powder in his food. To or, make it not taste good? Yeah, I mean, the to sweet, make the, the poop sweet not, poo, yeah, 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 it made it gross apparently. So he <laughs> continued to eat it, and then uh, actually, here, it, just, it makes them sick. Here, eat this thing right. that will make your poop not taste good. Right. He was like, oh. no, but I think it actually made it taste good, but it made them sick. So mm. he cleaned up the yard, and then he came into our kitchen and threw up a turd. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, it was it might be the worst thing I've ever smelled in my life, but it was where we prepare food. In this the is house. the best episode we've yeah. ever done. We <laughs> yeah. absolutely, without without a doubt. It was the first time my wife went running from the. She's like, I can't even. It's going to stay there forever, or you're going to clean it up because yeah. I can't even be in. Well, we have all these puppies at my house right now. Uh, we only have them for a couple more weeks, thank God. But there's just poop constantly everywhere, and my I'm like my home smells like a house of ill repute. It's just. Uh, awful and uh and lulu the mom so she would we would kennel them together with her just so they needed to do her thing so what she would do uh she would go around the kennel and she would eat up all the puppies poop and it was like what's wrong with her why is she doing this and it's it's an instinctual thing it is to uh keep the den clean for the for her puppies and then also to keep predators from being able to smell where they are but then she started doing this other thing so she has been nursing them as you know mother dogs are want to do and uh she got tired of doing that i guess so i would bring her in i would put her in the kennel and all of a sudden she would start doing that dog thing that they they <laughs> and then she would vomit all the food that she had eaten and then all the puppies would jump in and eat all of it and it was like there's something wrong here like she's got some condition. I don't know what it is, but uh, found out that that's how dogs wean their puppies. It's like, hey, I'm going to give you something else to eat so you don't nurse. Hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah, isn't that weird? That's, that's, that's not weird. That's gross. Well, I mean, it's it's also like that's how God created Well, do it. other animals do that? Uh, my like wife how? did. You know, she when <laughs> she was ready to stop nursing, she just would eat a burger and then spit it up and the baby would come over and... Oh. Goblin, you know, like baby bird. Is, that's right. That's right. That's a great game. That's a great game. So the grossest <laughs> thing I've ever had pet wise, when I was like eight or nine, my sister had a guinea pig, my older sister, and I was holding it. And, uh, and all of a sudden, like it, I was kind of like holding it on my belly and all of a sudden it was very, very warm. And it was like, Oh, I think it pooped or peed on me. And so I lifted it up and it's bleeding from its rear end, like, like crazy. And it, it, and it later died in my hands, but I have no idea what caused that. <laughs> Paul's losing it over there. I can't keep a straight face when I'm trying to tell this story and he's laughing, but you know, they make that noise that, that Guinea pig noise that, mm, 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 and then it just stopped. And so I was covered in guinea pig blood, and my sister was screaming, crying. I swear I didn't do anything to the guinea pig. It was sick. Now, because I'm a guest, do I get to go when we accept the award for best podcast? For yes. This episode? Oh, yes. Yeah. I yes. appreciate that. This is good. Awesome. Yeah. So I will say I've never had an animal 
But my son, uh, maybe this is common. My son did pee in my mouth when he was a baby one time. Not, he had it's a, not common. He had a giant blowout, and I was trying to change him in the car, and I was like, it was. I mean, it was a blowout. And so I was like leaning over. It's like in the back seat. And of course, like with boys, you know, they have parts. They got that, like a little yeah, sprinkler yeah. system, yeah. And it just like, I was sitting there with my mouth open and it just like <laughs> sprayed right in it. And I was just like, well, now this has happened. Yeah. So. My daughter vomited in my mouth because I had her above me and I was like talking to her like, oh, you're so cute. And she just bleh, right in my mouth. Dogs and babies, the grossest things ever. That's right. We love them so much. Oh. Well, she learned that from your wife, right? Yeah. That's, she was <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. She was like, I'm going <laughs> to monk, like monkey see, monkey do. She thought you were playing baby bird. Monkey throw poo all of you. Uh, I don't think that's how that saying goes. <laughs> hey, so are there things you want to do in public that you're not allowed to do socially? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe. So there is this survey that came out uh, that, that there are lots of things that people want to be able to do in public that they don't feel are socially acceptable. And some of them are very sweet and touching. And so I'm going to go through this list, and then I want to know what things that you think, absolutely not, these should not be things that are done. So can I go ahead and tell you when I looked at this list, I do five of these things already. Well, that's good. I need to look at that. So I'm going to read it to you, and then you can tell me yes, no. All right, so the first, these are the top 10 things. Number one, compliment a stranger. And you know, no, no, okay. Yes. Yeah, I do that. I do that. I'd, I'd have to be careful with that, though. I mean, like, because if, like, to go up to a female, I mean, or a guy, I guess today's culture, but like, you have to be careful with it. Like, yeah. You know, but I have no problem being like, oh, I like your shoes. I like your outfit. You know, the one, you know. Yeah. You can't like walk up and be like, hey, I like that wagon you're dragging. Like, people are really like, actually close pulling to, a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so. like, you got to be careful with like, you gotta be careful with like, hey, you've lost some weight or like, hey, you, especially if it's a female, like, hey, you look good. Like, okay, well, where's this going? But yeah. I compliment people. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, number two, go. You got a nice haircut there, Rusty. I noticed it. Th- I didn't. It's, oh, it looks I like just, it. Yeah, it's just. Uh, <laughs> you actually, you fixed it. Yeah, I did. I normally don't. Uh, number two, go to the cinema alone. I think this is a British article, but go, so we'll call it go to the movies I've done that. alone. I do that I all the time. I love the movies alone. It's my favorite thing to do. Same. So why is this publicly unacceptable? I don't, I guess because like creepy people go to the movies alone. Well, but not like the movies we're going to see. I guess that's true. <laughs> I guess that's, pr- I mean, yeah. Okay, number three, <laughs> walk down the street singing loudly. So yeah, you can just stop that right that's now. That's a hard pass. Yeah, I don't do that. No, and, and if you think you want to do it, don't do that. That's awful. Yeah. yeah. Tell someone they love them. That's number four. Why is that socially unacceptable? To tell I, someone you love them? This is this is in England. So let's remember the those, those Brits are heartless individuals. No, and, they love dogs and horses. And the queen. And well, the queen. not anymore. They still love. May it. she rest in peace. They don't like to talk a lot because of their their bad uh, dental problems. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> that's true. Like in Austin Powers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number five. Listen, listen to something without headphones. No. Now this one, you can just go and jump in the middle of a train. Like I, I you, I do not want to hear your phone call or yeah. the podcast you're listening to. We have invented these wonderful things called headphones, AirPods. I don't want to listen to whatever it is you're doing. Okay, but let's talk about like. Bruno? Public. No, let's talk about like the beach. Do you like a radio at the beach? Like, no. is it okay to play? I say no, but my husband's like, yeah, let's turn on the radio. I'm like, I want to listen to the waves. No, I wouldn't do this, but I will say one of the funnest times I had was literally last week. We went to the Chris Stapleton, um, uh, Tyler Childers concert, and it was me and a couple guys here from Journey. And <laughs> for some reason, they got a Bluetooth speaker, like a like a Bluetooth speaker, and we're carrying it around listening to two chains as loud as it would go. And I just remember being like, and everybody loved it. Like everybody started dancing, like in the, like I thought everybody was gonna be annoyed by it and people like loved it. And you know, so actually like, I think you got to know the context of it, but sometimes like playing music out loud, like, Got people going. Maybe if you're in the mood for a concert, you know. Yeah, that's true. Too. We were already going to a concert, yeah. and then we're playing. Yeah. If you're out in the woods, and then yeah, that you might be two weird. chains. That, mm. Yeah, I do like a good two chain song. He's yeah. always talking about helicopters, and I'm not sure yeah. why. <laughs> uh, so I this is this is the one though where you know somebody is walking around with their phone on speaker and having mm-hmm. a full out conversation, and it's just like I I don't want to hear like I that that's just rude. Please. Go away. Uh, number six, fart or burp openly. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's not, I mean, so we have a book that we used to read to our kids, and it was, what if everybody did that? And it was about littering and things like that. But I look at this list and say, it sounds fine for yourself, but what if everybody did that? And people are just out farting and burping. It would be a little weird in church. 
I don't think we should be able to do it openly, but I do like the idea that if I have to do it, that I can just do it. Like, well, think about holding it is the worst. Right. Think like, about when you first start dating and like, I, I think when I first started dating my wife, it was a good six months before I farted in front of her and my, like my intestines hurt because I was but like, here's the thing. Like, what do you mean fart in front of her? Like, even like now, like if I've got a fart, like I'll go out of the room. Well, no, like, not like, I, I mean, not like, not like, hey, check this yeah. out. Not like I lifted my leg. It was like, Hey, listen to this one, honey. Uh, Dutch oven time. yeah, that's right. No, no. Just like, you know, like I don't want, it's nice to not have to leave the room and you know, it's just nice. polite dude. Well, who wants and to this is from polite? Jeremy. Remember his dating story from a couple <laughs> yeah. of right. months ago. That's where, where he left her <laughs> on the side the of the road. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, walk barefoot. I would just imagine that that's like walk barefoot out around places. That's just it. dangerous. I do it. I walk on my street walk. all the time barefoot. Yep. You're going to get hookworms. I don't or, like concrete. Or you step on a needle. That's not what you get hookworms from. That's, <laughs> that's not what you get hookworms from. No, you're right. You get, you get worms. So your, your first response to walking barefoot is you're going to get hookworms? Yes. All right. a dirty needle. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Have you ever seen hookworms? They're crazy. Uh, number eight, do <laughs> yoga stretches in the park. People do. Is that something that people don't do? I don't do yoga, but I've seen people do that. Okay. Uh, number nine, adjust your underwear. Everybody does that. That needs to happen. Uh, yes. I mean, what are you going to do? You got a wedgie or whatever and just dance in the street. You think people, I mean. My wife people does. Do that. Any, anything on this list that you, or anything not on this list that you think should be? I mean, that people are embarrassed to do in public, but wish they could. I don't know. I, I've talked to my kids this week about it. I think you should be able to smack other people's kids oh. out in public like you used to be able to in the good old days. High take. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Paul, I've been with the kids a while. No, I kind of agree with him on, I'm in, I don't know about smacking them in the face, but it, it would be kind of nice to tell a kid, be like, you need to take a chill pill for their parents. Like, listen to your mom. Listen we to your dad. Public and my wife's teaching. Uh, I guess it's a teacher thing. Yeah. She was like, boys. <laughs> yeah, we were at a soccer game, and they were these kids were acting a fool, and their parents weren't paying attention. She was and like, "You need to stop doing that and put that down." No, I agree with that. So we just had some real crazy technical difficulties, and uh, we had been talking for a good ten minutes before we noticed that something had happened. So uh, we are going to pick back up talking about <laughs> Pablo Escobar. Okay. Because uh, does that work for everybody? We've already had this conversation, so <laughs> you're going to hear you're going to hear some class. <laughs> cl- I don't know what we said. High class yeah. uh, acting here as we pretend that we've never had this conversation before. Okay. <laughs> hey, do you guys know that something really exciting is coming? What? What's it, that? It's called the Cocaine Bear movie. <gasps> Ooh, we love the cocaine bear. We do. There. Yeah. It's, it's directed by Elizabeth Banks and Ray Liotta. May he rest in peace is also in it. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to do a, a viewing party as a church. I'll get us some shirts. Uh, I don't know if we can do that. But. Probably not. Probably not. But it, it would be fun. Can we adopt the cocaine bear as Journey's mascot? Well, he is in a story. You can go to Lexington and see him. I know, but can we like put him on the... Yeah. We're actually going to do a, 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 a cocaine bear t-shirt giveaway in, in yes. December. We're sure. going to we're gonna do a... A drawing. Oh, yeah. They have all those new stuff you can buy. But, yeah, I'm excited about it um, because I think it's it's filmed in Kentucky, so that's exciting. And a story about something that happened in Kentucky, so that's exciting. Wait, but it's it, it is filmed here? Part of it, I just read an article about it. Part of it is oh, I hope filmed. there's not, like, some bad Kentucky accents. You know, oh, I'm sure well, there sure. were. Yeah. I hate when people do those. It doesn't sound natural. What does a cocaine or what does a Kentucky accent sound like? You know, where they try to make it all, like. I thought Rusty, our resident. Come on. Voicer. There's. Cocaine bear oh. down in the Appalachian. Hey, y'all. Y'all see that cocaine bear <laughs> wanting some more blood and blow? That that Because that, that's the tagline. <laughs> yeah. Bear on a rampage for more blow and blood. We missed the whole, my whole Tony Montana thing. Oh. Yeah, and, there was a lot we missed. Yeah. I mean, and it's hard to go back and recreate that conversation. I mean, I can sit here and do Tony Montana all day, but it was mildly offensive anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> it might be for, maybe we were being protected. Yeah. I don't know. It could have got us in trouble it, it, because the whole diarrhea and the mouth conversation wasn't going to lose anybody. That's true. No yeah, one's really listening true. at this point. I feel like they've all just turned <laughs> off and they're waiting for next week's. Well, maybe, maybe, but uh, I, I don't know. I'd like to believe that there are people whose lives are being changed by this episode. People listen to it. I, people even tell me what number episode they're on, which means that they're like counting them. But I had a lady come up to me at a wedding that I did on Saturday and said that she loves Journey. She doesn't come, but she listens to the um, regular sermon podcast. And then she started listening to the 
Violently Uninspired podcast. And she's like, I listen to it. My mom listens to it. We told our cousin to listen to it. Like they've got like wow. a whole group of people listening to it. And so those people are listening. Well, I, I and I think somebody must have listened to our episode recently where I made the announcement that you were pregnant because I saw Junior was yeah, somebody sitting. Put a, somebody put a copy of Junior a on VHS my desk. A VHS copy of the movie Junior. <laughs> I was going to refer. I forgot to mention that already. Yeah, I walked in at like on my desk. It's just um, a copy of a VHS of Junior. And that's very thoughtful. I have no idea how I'm going to watch it because I haven't owned a VCR in 20 years, but I'll figure it out. Oh, you must watch the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I just like doing Arnold's. Why is that not offensive? <laughs> no. Because it's Austria. No, who's offended by Austria? I don't. I don't check the demographics. Where is Austria? I mean, I know kind of Germany, where it's Germany area. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of Switzerland, Eastern yeah. Europe. So, so we got way away from the cocaine bear, but we're all excited that there's a movie coming out. I think we should go see it. Give a review. Maybe we'll go to this. Tech, maybe we'll go see it in Lexington. We'll do a field trip. We'll go see it in Lexington. And they go to Kentucky, Kentucky store afterwards and go actually see the real cocaine bear stuffed in the store. It's a movie of Arnold versus the cocaine bear. <laughs> it kind of took a Russian turn there. I'm not really sure what happened. Oh, interesting. One of my favorite podcasts that came out, they did a whole episode on bears and they talked about the cocaine bear. It's the Nate Lynn podcast, Nate Bergazzi. And their question was, do you think that a human being could take on a bear and win? No. 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 They, all, they came up with Barry Sanders, maybe, and Mike Tyson in his prime. Mm. Or their two choices. They said Barry Sanders could elude him, wear him out a little bit, hit him hard, and then you know Mike Tyson is prime. One good shot might knock the bear out. But that was the only two people they could come up with that could take on a bear. Mike Tyson used to sleep with tigers, so I mean, yeah. he probably could. No. Hey, so let's talk about the rapture. <laughs> again. It was way better the first yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, y'all. We, 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 yeah, we, we have Ruined. no control over uh, over technology and. Uh, we're going to blame Satan and uh, do a prayer of the Holy Spirit would bless this computer for just a few more minutes. Hey, so Penny, uh, we already talked about this, but yeah. you're going to tell us again. Tell us your sob story about being afraid of the rapture. <laughs> so you did. First of all, you need to go back into the article because nobody knows what we're talking about. Oh yeah. So there's this article that says that we uh, we Christians, a lot of us, those of us who grew up uh, with the rapture theology in our lives. <laughs> now have rapture anxiety because um, either we are afraid that we're going to be raptured or left behind being raptured and that it's this whole new field of study uh, in mental health. And Jeremy said, nope, I didn't have that. Paul said, nope, I didn't have that. Well, and no, I said that we, no, no, we no. knew the books were there. I right. just didn't read them. They were pushed. I mean, it was like New York Times bestseller for a little while. And then there was a movie. What do they know? Yeah. Wait, so no one else at this table had a fear of being raptured? Oh, no, I definitely did. Okay, no, that, I didn't. No, we didn't read those books, though. You, what? No. I didn't have a fear of being raptured. I didn't believe in it. Okay. That's our pastor. I, yeah, I well, still don't believe in it. I still don't believe in it. I don't no, believe in it either. I, I had somebody terrify That's what me. makes this funny now. I'm just <laughs> yeah. saying like... Back in the day. What about your because dog? Of, yeah, tell us your sad story. Okay, so the Left Behind series came out like probably mid-teens and I read the entire books and the rapture. I grew up with it in church and uh, obviously it was preached about quite a bit. And uh, my big, my biggest fear with the rapture was that my dog would be left behind and I would go to heaven. So it was very sad. You're still sad about it. That was I awesome. Am. You told I, it all over again. and I know because I told you because the Left Behind Movies with Kurt Cameron, which were really awesome. <laughs> they came back from the mall. That and Kurt all- <laughs> Cameron, such a hot commodity. <laughs> and then like all the dogs were running around with no leash. And one of them was like looking for his owner. And it was very sad. And I thought, oh my gosh, I got to leave a big bowl of water and food out for my dog. So when I go to heaven and my dog's here. <laughs> and I thought, why wouldn't God take my dog too? <laughs> so like, I mean, by that theology. So you're assuming you made it on the first round of rapture. You were that good. That was my other fear was that so what, if, what if like I wasn't a true believer? What if I got left behind and like I had to fight the seven and, years of tribulation? Yeah. <laughs> Craziness. At Craziness. least you'd have seven more years with your dog though. I'm like, I would be a really good fighter. I would, yeah. I would well, go all in. I, I guess I'm, did you I'm practice the book series? Did you practice the dog? Did you practice karate moves in your backyard? Just to- No, I'm like, what church would I go to? Where would I go and like have my home base which church would i pick like that's the type of your home what what are you now like a like escape new no, so i'm one of those people also like when i'm traveling i look at um farms especially when i go up to india a lot i'm like ooh, that farm would be really good for a zombie apocalypse to like hang out and like put my team together you've watched way too much walking dead <laughs> well better it's better than i guess more i mean zombies would be more likely right than an actual rapture yeah probably so yeah. so uh 
Yeah. So I had a friend um, who, when I was in high school, he, he was a little bit older than me and we were doing this Bible study and, you know, everybody always wants to talk about revelation because it's just such a confusing book. And, uh, you know, he was only like four or five years older than me, but he might as well have been, uh, you know, doctorate in Bible at that point. Um, and he brought out this diagram that had like this person in the European union is, you know, the antichrist. And this is the, the whore of Babylon, this, this woman that's doing this thing and this country is doing this. And I like, I was terrified that like, Oh my gosh, we're, we're living in the end times. I don't want this. I don't like this. All these earthquakes. Yeah. And, uh, and it wasn't until, uh, I got a little bit older and a little more educated that I'm like, well, look at this, you know, uh, poppycock all about <laughs> rapture. Uh, cause head, here's the headline people. Uh, rapture's not in the Bible. I kind of want to read the books again as no, a different view. You don't. Yeah. You, you just, no, let's do a good. I don't even think they were probably very good books. Not even, even if the no, theology was they correct, were. they were so good. <laughs> and then you put Kirk Cameron in it and it's like the best Christian movie ever. I don't think it's going to hold up. Like you think. And wait, wait a minute. Didn't, uh, what's we, his name? Redo one. Nicholas, Nicholas Cage. Cage. We oh. talked about that. Yeah. 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 This is, this is that. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we did. And he's in one. We were acting. I even liked like <laughs> the, uh, the mark of the, the demon, like on like, the 666, it was like transparency. It was, so it was, like made like a rainbow on your head. Yeah. Just cause I'm not familiar with rapture theology. Like I know what it is, but I don't believe, I didn't believe in it when I was a kid. Cause I didn't really believe in God when I was a kid. So there's a whole mm-hmm. conversation there. By the time I actually did believe in God, I was already in college. And thankfully I had professors that just talked about the nonsense of dispensational premillennialism, which is where rapture comes from. Um, and eschatology. So that's like the topic and there's four different views. But anyway, so like if you die during like the tribulation period, what happens? So like you get raptured and that's like the first group, right? The good, the good people, the good Christians. Right. Then there's like another group of like lukewarm Christians, lukewarm people. And then like, but what happens if you die during tribulation? So like if you're a martyr, like if you die for, you yeah. die for Christ during that time period, you would become a saint. You'd be given a robe and a crown. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were one of the evildoers, it's just down to hell with you. What if you were like neither? What if you were just like trying to protect your poor dog <laughs> and you got killed accidentally? I, I don't know. That wasn't discussed. By the demon warriors. Then you'd be in limbo. Yeah. You well, would be judged at the end. You would either yeah. left or right. Thrown what into if the you lake had the choice? So what if you had the choice of you either get raptured or you could stay with your dog? Which one would you have chosen? Honestly, like I think I probably would have stayed. <laughs> Oh and gosh. fought. <laughs> yeah, stayed and fought. You, you hear? What, yeah. is, what is this? I, I really don't understand this. You need to watch the movie. Book. I didn't see. No. no. <laughs> I would take care of everybody's dogs. Penny Rambo over here. No, walking I'm, around with them. I'm real confused. Like, are there people coming after you then? Post? Yes. Yeah, yeah the, there's like. The Satanists. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy things coming after you. Oh. Giant men on horses and death and. And some Russian guy that oh. in the in the book. I, I'm not saying they're yeah, all Russian He's the Antichrist. People, but... He's Russian and he can read minds and make you do bad things. It and <laughs> It was a very Putin-esque character yeah, for really sure. Was. Like um, we grew up Southern, like I was in a Southern Baptist church and we were all about the rapture. Like they loved it. And Oh yeah, big fans. As we get older, I feel and I hate to say it, but I think it was the old people not wanting to talk about dying. So they were like, any day now it's coming and we're going to be aces. All you eight-year-olds, yeah, you know, tough luck yeah. when you were born because you got no life ahead of you. But- so there was even one written, like the Left Behind series, the last book that they wrote um, was of when Jesus made heaven here on earth and like he ruled for a thousand years and like they made a story out of that. And that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing, the thing about <laughs> yeah, rapture, that's the millennial, right? When you live yeah, right. for a thousand years, the, the rapture theology as a whole is it's, it's only like a 200 at max. It's only a 200 year old theological belief. It didn't exist for the first 1800 years of the church. It wasn't until the last 200 that it actually became a thing. And, because of honestly, because of the way media was able to be mass reproduced and uh, the the great um, sort of the, the great evangelistic efforts of the mid 20th century. Um, and a lot of it, it comes back to Billy Graham teaching that all over the world. Like it's now this just accepted that, oh, yeah, well, this is, you know, it's in the Bible. But like the word rapture never shows up in the Bible. The the phrase uh 
seven years of tribulation doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible. There's no mention of seven years and a tribulation together anywhere in the Bible at all. They have to do some mental gymnastics in the book of Daniel to get to that number. Um, the, and, and it's just, it's, it's a lot of choosing to read a, a first century piece of literature that was written for a specific audience in a specific way at a specific time and just choosing to ignore all that and say, well, this has to be about us in the 21st century America. Um, and, and it's been a very abusive form of teaching. Um, yeah. People like to use it to abuse. And I, you know, one thing I learned that I was shocked about when I started studying rapture theology was, of course, I was in college at that point, but like those books, I mean, they made a ton of money off those books, but like it became like a popular thing everybody wanted to talk about. And I was shocked, and, and this is just behind the scenes, a little bit of honesty though, I was shocked by the amount of people that I knew that didn't believe in rapture theology because like Rusty says, it's really not a biblical principle or concept, but would preach it because it was like popular. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they, like if you talk to them, like they didn't really understand it. They didn't believe that like all the stuff was going to happen that Tim LaHaye and Jenkins or whatever said was going to happen. Um, but they would still like preach it because it was like, and that was the part where I was like, all right, we're, this is, this is messed up that we're like, we are, we're scaring people you know, we're scared poor Penny over here with her dog, you know, on something that she didn't even need to be scared about. Well, not only that, it made people feel special and set aside the idea that they would be raptured before everybody else and everybody else be left behind. You made a bad choice that so you get to stay here and yeah. live in torture. You Which know. isn't very Christian when you no, think about it. No, it's not at all. I think it was a good short term selling thing because like, I remember that in church and it was terrifying because it was like, you don't, because we never talked about the fighting and all that. It was just like, or the second wave, it was like, if you, you didn't yeah. get raptured, well, good luck to you, but we're not even bringing yeah. that up. But then, like, as you get older and, you you know, you realize, like, this is all just made up. And then people start leaving the church because, yeah. like, this is all I know was I was terrified and this wasn't even in the Bible. And you, what you else talk about, in though, the Bible like, you made? were, like, asking about, like, finding a church, like, to the to your point, like, if you didn't get raptured, like, you raptured or not, but, like, if you didn't. Like, where do you go? You like, come to my church. But I'm saying, like, what <laughs> churches are left? Because aren't all the good Christians gone? Right. So, like, what do you feel kind of awkward that Sunday when you're like, oh, I guess you're still around too? Well, you know, like, another thing that was brought up, like a scare tactic, was age of accountability, which kind of oh, ties yeah, into the whole sure. rapture thing. So, they they talked about that in the movies too. Like, oh, this yeah. kid's 12. He should have known better. <laughs> there he is left behind with no parents. I still haven't hit the age of accountability, I, oh. I don't believe. So, yeah. I, I don't have to worry. I'm just saved. From the get-go. <laughs> so I'm pure as a newborn baby. Uh, okay, so people email us. Let us know. what Do you have rapture stories? Did you ever wake up and think that you had been raptured? Like I'm know? curious how people still believe in it. Because I think that a lot of people, like, they probably read those books or heard about the books. And then it was, I mean, it was preached everywhere. I mean, so unless you were in some type of theological world where people were like, no, none of this is accurate. Um and then you haven't been to church or haven't really like studied es eschatology. Like how many people still like maybe aren't buying the books and going to the movies, but still believe like at any moment they could be raptured. Yeah. Like, well, and you know, what's even more fascinating is the, the people who preach this, um, they know it's not in the Bible. Like the, the, the big quote is from Charles Fuller. He started Fuller Seminary, um, the Fuller Theological Seminary out in California. And back in the seventies, Charles Fuller was being asked about the rapture. And he said, there is not a single shred of evidence or scripture that backs up a belief in the rapture, but I still choose to believe in it. And it's just like, well, you're just, you're just making a, a, like a conscious decision then to believe something that, that you recognize isn't even in what you hold as your authority. So it, it's people, you, very few of your serious theologians hold to a rapture theology. Um, that's not to say that there aren't theologians who do. There are lots of them and they make lots of money off of it. But your serious people that actually studied the scripture, they, mm -hmm. they're like, no, this isn't a thing. So it's just arrogant to think that like, oh, well, for 1800 years, the church had it wrong. And now all of a sudden we, we've got it right in the 21st century. So anyway, uh, so send us your rapture stories. Were you raptured or did you believe you were raptured? Or come find me on Sunday. Let's have a talk. That's right. Penny's got a sawed off <laughs> shotgun with the Antichrist name on it. Which did you like wake up every morning, go to your parents' bedroom to see like if their clothes were laying there? <laughs> no. 
we, so everybody's <laughs> naked in heaven? I wish I would have known this. Yeah, I yeah liked, that was another thing. Everyone's naked in heaven. Part, you don't I wish I'd have known Penny back then because it would have been awesome to like, get everybody in on it. Like everybody she knows, just like <laughs> they're just going to leave and Thanks, go somewhere Jeremy. and like leave their clothes on their beds and like, you know. Everybody's like dogs running around. Like have a whole park with just like piles of clothes all around it. Little dogs running around. <laughs> so we had, this, we, we had this guy in college who was, uh, he, he was very much into the rapture and, uh, and so some guys decided they were going to play a prank on him. And so one one night, like while he was asleep, they like set a little campfire outside of his window and then got everybody on the floor to like disappear. And so when he woke up, everybody was gone and there was a fire outside of his of his way. He he was convinced that the rapture had happened and he had been left behind. I'm sure he's got anxiety now. The good, good old Christian college days. <laughs> Gotta love it. Hey, so we've got some things coming up here at Journey that we want you to know about. Uh, the first thing is, if you haven't been here or you haven't been watching online, we are in the middle of a brand new series called Spooked, and it's all about sort of the spooky, weird stories in the Bible, and uh, we're having a whole lot of fun with it. We've got these uh, these award-winning short videos that we are making that uh, that have been a lot of fun. You get to see our acting on display. Uh Check them out on Facebook or Instagram. They are there for your viewing pleasure. And be sure to join us on a Sunday morning, either in person at 10 or 11.15 or online at those same times. If you have a student in our student ministry, October 29th is Monster Bash. It's $5. You can find more information about that on the Journey app, or you can talk to our student pastor, Kyle. And then October 30th through November 3rd, we are holding Love Bullet Week. And we're really excited about this. It's an opportunity for us as a church to love our community. We're going to be doing a lot of work around the local elementary schools. We're going to be handing out soft drinks and candy on Halloween in some of the neighborhoods. And we really want you to be involved in this. So you can go to the Journey app right now, you can sign up for that, and when you pick a night to serve, it will put you in a group, and that group will give you more information about what is coming uh, in regards to the projects for that day. If you have any questions about that, be sure to reach out to me, Rusty, at journeyshepherdsville.com. So uh, we do this about every quarter where we just take some time and we talk about some of our favorite things and uh, favorite books, favorite movies, favorite products, favorite anything that just doesn't have to be new, uh, just new to you or something that you're like all of a sudden like, hey, I like this thing. Um, so uh, anybody want to go first? It doesn't matter. Just, Jeremy, you got a list? Yeah, I got a list. All right, go for it. Um, so I have some new things, and then I'm going to talk about some old things too. Uh, some new things. When I was on a plane going to Guatemala, I watched a documentary called Chasing Nolan. It's about Nolan Ryan. Uh, I loved Nolan Ryan as a kid. I think everybody, there's like a myth and legend behind them. But it's actually really, really good to watch that documentary. So if you're into documentaries, uh, started the Rings of Power, still don't like it. Uh, and then also, uh, <laughs> I felt, I've checked out a movie that I didn't think I was going to like, but ended up loving uh, was Ryan Gosling's got a movie on Netflix called The Gray Man. Yes. And it's like, it's one of those movies I love every once in a while. The plot's not even that great, but it's just two hours of fighting and yeah. just chase scenes and just like, you just get lost in the action of it. But there's like one scene, it's like a fight scene that lasts like 20 minutes. I don't think, and I even watched like an article about it and they said that most movies, action movies have about seven like scenes of action. Theirs has like 20. So like, it's like two and a half hours of him. Um, and it, and the plot's not bad. Like actually being pretty good. So those are some movies I watched recently. Uh, TV shows. I just am in a bat weird TV season right now. I can't find a lot of stuff that I like. Um, so I just started rewatching The Office. So for the fifth time in a row, I've started at season episode one and am doing that. And then I watched like the Jeffrey Dahmer stuff, but I'm not going to recommend it because it was just, it was, it was messed up, but I did watch it. And a lot of people like that. Uh, books. I'm reading Bob Goff Undistracted right now. It's a really good book. And then I'm on a big Eugene Peterson kick again. And so on Living Well, I've recommended it before, but if you haven't read it, it's real. It's almost it's not a devotional at all, but it's like every uh, story is like a page, page and a half. So it's a quick, easy read. And then as Ke uh, Kingfisher's Catch Rise, Catch Fire is another book that he um, wrote that was really good. And then music, um, I am just in a big Tyler Childers kick right now. So I pretty much listen to Tyler Childers 90% of the time I listen to music right now. Um, he's my favorite artist, becoming one of my favorite artists. And uh, I saw him last week in concert with Chris Stapleton and Dwight Yoakam. And it was awesome. 
And I'm not even a country music fan. Like, I really don't even like country music. But Tyler Childers, for whatever reason, he's just, he's clicked with me. And so uh, he's got a new album out. It's actually a gospel album. And so uh, it's pretty good. So those are kind of the things I'm into right now. You said products. I don't really know what new products. I mean, I don't. No, just anything that you you are a big fan of all of a sudden. Like, oh, this is a new thing that I picked up and I like it. And I don't know. Like. No. Okay, cool. <laughs> no. I got a new iPhone because I was using like one, like four, it's four, I was using like an iPhone 10. Um, mm-hmm. So I got the new one and uh, the, the camera is really good. That's all I can say. So I do like the camera on it, but that's like the only new thing I've gotten recently. So. Cool. Yeah. Penny, what Oh, that got? was so oh. like cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, whatever. actually a lot of that stuff Stop I've talking. seen, like Undistracted, yeah. I've read that. Yeah. Um, Really good. And I liked the gray man. It was good. Yep. So, uh, okay. So some things I'm into. Um, a documentary called the Barkley Marathons. It's old. It's like 2014. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Fantastic. If you all have not watched it, you need to. It's like 60 hours, 20 miles. You have to do 100 miles total in 60. It's crazy. Like, and like 50 people enter every year. And, and like some of them don't only, even. Like most people don't. Like yeah. la- last one I saw, only one person finished. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not a runner, but my husband is. And it's it's really good. And the guy that runs it, I'm not trying to take over your thunder, yeah. but he's just crazy. Like at the starting yeah. line, like he's smoking cigarettes. Like he's <laughs> yeah. all these guys are like, so the guy that runs organizes this race, you should watch it. That's a great recommendation. Doesn't even run. He's not yeah. a runner, never ran. He just found this really tough course and he was like, it'd be interesting to see people do that. So he just puts this race on every year. He doesn't run. And the other thing that's crazy about it is every year there's a new element to it yeah. to make it tougher because people started being able to do it. So like he did it. So like a one, one of the ones I watched was uh, he went out and bought a bunch of wool socks and just gave them to guys that I started said, you have to wear these. Can't wear anything else is what you have to wear. It's not socks. like normal running. Like, it's it's weird. like hills yeah. and all kinds of yeah, crazy but a great, things. Great recommendation. Sorry. Okay. I mean, uh, also, Jeremy and I talked about this too. The Bear on FX. Fantastic show if you're needing a new show to watch. It's one of those shows that it makes you feel like they're not acting. Like I've never experienced anything like it. Fantastic show. You can binge watch that. All right. So another thing I'm into... I took to heart last time we talked about the Bible and how I should read it every day. So I started a podcast called 10 minute Bible talks in a day. And it's just, I start my day with it. 10 minutes. Sometimes they're really bad y'all, but sometimes they're really good. So it's just, uh, if they take one passage and they apply it to like a question, like what promises are you making to God or what kind of idols do you have in your life? Or how do you fit into this whole entire story of, you know, God's story. So it's really good if you're looking for something quick in the morning. Um, so some products, I'm going to be girly here. I'm one of those girls that has like seven different products that I put on my face every night. I just, it's my thing. So Neutrogena, Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. I got my husband into it too. It's like this gel. It makes you feel like you've splashed your face with water and it stays there all day. And it's nice. You guys should try it. Your skin is glowing right yeah, now. Thank you. I know. Okay. So another thing I'm into is happy dance. It is a, Okay. Kristen Bell makes a CBD product and uh, Happy Dance is like eye cream and you put it underneath it and it makes your your bags and your blue eyes go away. We all need it. All of you all. Why only blue no. eyes? Oh, I meant like it takes away like the black and blue no. under your eyes. So. Okay. Anybody interested? No. Okay. Whatever. All right. Last thing I meant to you. So did you know that Jupiter has been the closest to Earth that it has been since like the 1960s? Mm-hmm. Did you all know that? I did know that actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can view it with like a telescope or you can get the SkyView app, which you yeah. takes your camera of your phone and you can see all the planets and the stars and it's free and it's amazing. We Everybody do star should walk. do it. We do star walk, but it's the same thing. Our kids yeah, love, we it. love it. We can't go on a walk at night without, without using, using it. Without using it. I know it's so much it fun. And the space station is flew by three times last week. Yeah, it and did. Then there's two weeks and then it's going to do it again. Yep. So get the app. It'll mm-hmm. be awesome for you and your kids. What about like dog diarrhea? Is that good for your face too? I mean, <laughs> that was only in the hair, Jeremy. Yeah. And, it, and it made it nice and shiny. <laughs> it wasn't diarrhea. It was puke. Oh, well. <laughs> Vomit. Thought uh, that lady. The first nice lady. and slick. Oh, uh, well, her, I don't know. I, there had, if she swallowed that or she had some sort of infection What if in it her like mouth. she had like, it, it, what if it like cleared up her skin and stuff? You know that like people would start being like, oh, that really works. People use blood. Kim Kardashian. So yeah, maybe. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> people use blood. All right. We're going to get going. We're talking about vampires. Yeah. We're going to move on from there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Paul? What do you uh, got? Anything? Uh, no, you weren't we, prepared. We are, well, no, we are deep into Halloween season and every year we, this is our, we sit and watch a try to watch a Halloween movie every night during October, and I don't know if I have any recommendations. We've seen some really bad movies this month. It just seems like the movies that you can get on streaming aren't really not all the best. But I really enjoyed the movie Slither. I, oh, I love that movie. Seen. Yeah, it was uh, James Gunn before his Guardians of the Galaxy and Elizabeth Banks from The Cocaine Bear. I think that might have been one of her first movies. 
It's pretty great. And um, the new Nope, the movie from... Um, I haven't seen it yet. I want to uh, see that. Pill, was, uh, no, yeah. Jordan Peele. Pee, Jordan Peele, yeah. I think it might have been... It's my least favorite of his movies, but it was still yeah. very good because he's pretty great. Um, I don't know, products. I wasn't ready for that. We don't we don't watch a lot of TV, I guess, at our house. We don't have not any fun stuff. Uh, we have a lot of Bluey on, it seems like, constantly. Oh, we love the, the new Bluey. So the new the two new episodes are pretty mm-hmm. uh one of they have they take the dad to family court because he farted in the kid's face. Fluffed. And, you know, Fluffed. He, he has a fluffy, yeah, in the kid's <laughs> yeah. face. That was pretty So good. what's so funny is is that Fluffy, I was not allowed to say fart until I was 18. We only could call them fluffies in my oh. house growing up. So when I saw that, it was like, oh, maybe we're not only the, the only weird ones. We had never heard that because um, my wife's aunt, her cousins call her Aunt Fluffy. And now it's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so one more recommendation, but you got me thinking about You said uh, uh, key, uh, key and Pill. Uh, pill. So Key, which one's which? Uh, Jordan Peele is, is the, director the director. Okay, so the other guy, Key. He's on a show with Johnny Knoxville called Re- Reboot. It's mm-hmm. on Hulu, and it's about a 90s sitcom, kind of like Full House almost, that didn't go well because the director was... And the director, uh, it's all got a lot of famous people in it, but it's really funny. And it's Johnny Knoxville and the guy from Key, and then um, Reisner, I can't think of his name, but was on all those sitcoms in the 90s. Um, Paul Reisner? Paul Reisner is on there. It's, it's, it's a really good show, but it's on Hulu. So I, I do want to recommend that one. Nice. Okay. All right. Uh, I got a couple. So I'm, I'm, uh, reading, uh, a, a, uh, autobiography by Bob Odenkirk right now called comedy, 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 drama, uh, Bob Odenkirk. He's Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And for a long time he was doing like sketch comedy and writing. And so it's just his story from going from all of that to, you know, becoming Saul Goodman and being enmeshed in this dramatic acting role. Um, and then I also just, uh, just got done with Steve Martin's born standing up. Um, That's a ec- good one. excellent book, excellent book. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's the audiobook version's awesome because Steve Martin reads it to you and, uh, very, very enjoyable. Um, obviously I'm, I'm loving Andor. Uh, it's a very different type of star Wars show. It's, um, much, much more like a James Bond type thing or something. It's yeah. Uh, and if you're struggling with that one, rewatch rogue one, that'll help. Yeah. 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 So it, it's, it's, uh, I'm enjoying that one a lot. And then I was just on a trip and my wife and I, we started a brand new podcast called S town. It's not, it's been around for a while. It's, made oh, yeah, about it's the one same. of my favorites yeah, ever. It is fast. It is fantastic. We're on, we've got like two episodes left and, uh, it's just, it's, it's about this weird dude in Alabama who, uh, he hates the town he lives in and they shorten it to S town cause he calls it something else. And, uh, he's convinced that there's been this murder that's happened in the town. And so this guy that works for this American life comes down and it's just, it ends up being just about this guy. It's fascinating. It's, it's fantastic. It's I've had so many really people good. got hooked on that. I mean, it's probably what, like four or five years that it came yeah. out. Yeah. So about three years ago, I guess when it first came out, cause we were, we were really, we were like the other podcast those that people make the, uh, cereal, cereal, so they made that, and so we went and, and listened to it on our way to Destin one time. So it's about a nine-hour drive to so some podcast. So we finished up the podcast that week. Well, we were driving back, and we realized you drive through Alabama coming back from Destin. So that town was only about 30 minutes out of the way. So we went there, and like I won't give any details, but there's a Little Caesars that gets comes a really yep. big part of the show. So we went and ordered a pizza from that Little Caesars awesome. in the town, and it was like it was really cool. But that is an amazing podcast. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's uh, not the one language th- is kind of bad. Yeah, so you can't just, listen to it with kids in the car. Um, yeah. We uh, we we waited till our kids had headphones on or or were sleeping before we would put it on. But uh, S Town, very very good. And then a, a couple of uh, uh, bands that I've gotten into lately. Um, one of them I've I've just kind of rediscovered. They're called the Punch Brothers, mm-hmm. and uh, they they're like kind of a, a folksy string band. Um, really, really good. And then this other band is they're a New Zealand uh, trio. Um, it's very it's also very folksy and acousticy and singer songwriting. Uh, and they're called Woodlock. So um, you check them out on Spotify. I think you'll enjoy both of them. Um, but. Uh, yeah. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Well, I do want to say because you talked about the guy from Better Call Saul, and we talked about Gray Man. Have you seen Nobody? Oh, Not yet. That's I, really it's good. Great. I've heard it is. He's great in that, and I, it's got a very like Gray Man type thing to it. So, I need yeah. to check it out because it's uh, it's available on HBO. I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that is our show for the day. We apologize for the technical difficulties and uh, that you had to listen to us um, do uh, award winning 
<laughs> jobs of recreating the magic that was, you know, well, I think spontaneous. Our, our videos on Sunday have shown anything. It's that we're amazing actors. Oh yeah, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. um, and we have the director here. Yeah, with we, us today. We we're all getting agents, and we're we're leaving. <laughs> we're leaving ministry and going to Hollywood, and uh, we're gonna start an improv troupe. Yeah, watch out, Kurt Cameron. These guys are coming. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, let's start a rapture based improv group. I love it. I, I love think it. it would be awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, we got to come up with some sort of snappy, clever name. Well, send us your recommendations. Uh, one of my best jokes I, I've ever heard about Kirk Cameron is comedian. He was, he was like, man, I was out in Hollywood. It's so crazy. When you see celebrities, you know, who I saw, I saw Kirk Cameron. And let me tell you, that dude makes a mean whopper. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Or Cameron. Uh, I was like, oh, that's funny. So uh, he has no career anymore. Well, that's our show. Have a great day, <laughs> and we will talk to you soon. I like them. I, They're I, fun.
trying to see like who's gonna say that. Sorry. Like who's gonna say the dumb thing like Jello did. <laughs> but you redeemed yourself. Because yeah. it was a man of war. I knew yeah. I was thinking of something along the line. I was way off in my head. All right, well, that's our show for today. We can't wait to be with you again. Once again, Jeremy and I are currently in Guatemala while Jeremy's in Guatemala. We'll be back with you soon.